Okay, everybody, we're on the last question of the practice test for chapter 8. This is number 12. We want to find the region R bound by the curves y equals 1 half x, y equals 2 sine x cosine x with x going from 0 to 1. So the very first thing you're going to want to do if you are given a calculator is to graph this so we know exactly what region we're talking about. I went ahead and put these into my TI. And I'm going to graph it on a standard window just to kind of take you through what would happen for you probably. Uh, I usually tell everyone to start with zoom standard, that's zoom 6. And let's see what we get. That's clearly y equals 1 half x. And there's that sine x cosine x function. Okay, so right now uh, it's a good idea to figure out exactly what region we're talking about. And I'm going to push zoom box. It's probably one of the handiest features here. Uh, I know I only want my axis to go from 0 to 1. So if you notice, I'm backing up my cursor carefully. Negative 0.15 to comma negative 0.24. I'm going to push and enter. That's going to fix that bottom corner. And I'm going to go to x equals 1, just past x equals 1, really. Uh, that should be enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and give my window a little bit of height. So uh, zoom box will allow me to set diagonal corners of a the window that I want to zoom in on. So I want my calculator screen to zoom in just on that window, just on that box that I drew. Push enter and that should get it done. Y equals 1 half x. And then here is that sine x cosine x. All right, just as expected. Let's take a screenshot of this. No, that's not it. No. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. I'm going to get this screen. We're going to put it onto my OneNote. Let's paste that on here. All right. So um, the re area that I want goes from 0 to 1 in the x coordinate. So that's 0 to 1. Notice 1 is right down over here. So I want this region right here. I know some of you are going to be driven crazy unless I color this in perfectly. Feel ya. All right, almost done. All right, any white spots? No, everything's yellow. There we go. We want this region right here. It doesn't go all the way to the intersection point, which is somewhere over here, and that's fine. Uh, if I want to find the area of a region, all I really need to do um, is take the integral from a to b of the top curve minus the bottom curve. And that'll get it done. So for us, um, We are told that we're going from 0 to 1. Our top curve is that sinusoidal curve. That's 2 sine x cosine x. I can tell because it's the, the red curve, which is in y2, minus 1 half x dx. That'll give me the area. 
get some more space down here. And we'll go back to the calculator and get this done. Um, okay. Integrate FNINT going from 0 to 1. And uh, let's see, I think I put sine, cosine, and y2. Yeah, I did. So throw y2 into the equation first. Minus y1. dx. Point four five eight oh seven. Maybe we're going to run our area equals zero point four five zero seven. Uh, I know some people might get pretty sticky unless you say it's area. Uh, just to make the linkage between the calculation, the answer, and the concept. Okay. All right. Let's move on again. Let's. I know we're going to need a lot more room for letter B. All right. And let's get that area again. So now we're going to take this region and we're going to rotate it around the line y equals one half x squared. Apologies if you know, I leave some white spots here. Otherwise we're just going to be watching me color. It's not too fun of a video, I don't think. Okay, so y equals negative one half. That's our axis of rotation. Um, whenever we revolve around a line, let's just pretend that y equals that's y equals one half, negative one half. Whenever we revolve around the, a line like that, if that line, that um, axis of revolution, is not a boundary curve, and it's not a boundary curve here. We're going to produce cross sections which look like a washer, which is why this is called a washer method. Okay, so we're going to look for the small radius and the large radius. I went ahead and I've drawn them in here right now. This is our large radius, sorry, our small radius, our large radius. I mean, when you draw it, you can tell. I mean, physically, one of them is larger than the other one. So let's see. we know the large radius is going to be equal to a difference of y coordinates between the red curve, so the y coordinate up here, that y coordinate is 2 sine x cosine x minus the y coordinate when we get to the bottom down over here. The y coordinate is negative one half. All right, so that's my large radius. My smaller radius. Okay, that's the difference in y coordinates up here to down here. Over here, my y coordinate, it's well, it's on the blue curve, and that blue curve is y equals one half x. So the y-coordinate here is one-half x. The y-coordinate down over here, just like before, uh, the y-coordinate is negative one-half. So minus negative one-half. All right, so we got our y-coordinates, um, our area formulas for the cross-sectional area. Our area is going to be pi r squared minus pi little r squared. Um, algebraically, if you want to factor that, that's pi 
big R squared minus little r squared. And I think that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, so our area is pi. Big radius squared is 2 sine x cosine x plus 1 half squared minus little radius 1 half x plus 1 half quantity squared. So that's my area formula. Now we're going to make the leap into calculus. So if I integrate an area formula, I get volume nicely. The problem says from 0 to 1 and uh, pi 2 sine x cosine x plus 1 half squared 1 half x plus 1 half squared dx. This is a calculator problem. Now I should probably link this with volume. This is a calculator problem, so you don't want to do too much algebra to simplify. Um, I know your algebra skills, most of you, and the more you try to simplify something, the more likely you are to make a mistake. So, uh, you know, you don't get any points for algebra. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, calculate this. Uh, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. Let's get a pi. All right, so uh, let's see. I think y2 was on top. If I wasn't sure, I would definitely take a look. y2 plus 1 half. Quantity squared. Minus y1 plus a one half quantity squared. And I close off that parenthesis and dx. Let's just make sure all the parentheses match up for one moment. So this one matches with this one, this one over here matches with this one here, matchy matchy, matchy matchy, everything looks pretty good, and I'll push enter, and I'll push enter, all right, 3.04. Five, two, seven, zero point zero three point zero four five two seven. So the volume equals zero point uh, three point zero four five two seven. All right. Is there a linkage between volume and that number? Yes, there is. Volume equals this, which equals this, which equals this. So yes. We have linked volume to the number. Is units important? Let me see. The question does not say specify units, so I don't have to specify any units. So I'm good. There's uh, question B. Question C. Find the perimeter of the region. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. Let's get the perimeter of that region. Nope. Which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Okay, uh, let's figure out a few things. Um, firstly, we are, there are three different kinds of lines that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, the easiest one would be from here, from 0, 0 to whatever coordinate this is right here. All right, that is a straight line segment, so we'll call that length one. 
it's a straight line segment. So rather than using calculus, it might be better if we just use the distance formula. So we've got x2 minus x1. Uh, the x coordinate here, or we should just get the coordinates here. Well, the x coordinate is definitely 1. It's on the curve y equals 1 half x. So half of 1 is 1 half. So that coordinate is 1, 1 half. Uh, this coordinate over here is 0, 0. So we've got 1 minus 0 squared plus 1 half minus 0 squared. That is what? Root uh, 1.25, I hope. So uh, we'll deal with that later. But that gives me the first length. Uh, length 2 is the distance from here to here. Um, and that might be, you know, some people might think that's the more difficult one of doing, to do. Uh, you could again use a distance formula, but really the y coordinates, or the x coordinates are the same. So all I have to do is take a difference of the y coordinates. That's just y2 minus y1. I put that in there. Okay, well, it's clear. The y coordinate down here is 1 half. We just calculated that. What is the y coordinate up here, though? Well, the y coordinate up there is just the 2, what was that equation? 2 sine x cosine x evaluated when x is 1 half. Let's get to our calculator and calculate that. That's uh, y2. Evaluated when x is 1. Did I say 1 half? Should have been 1. So when x equals 1, we get 0.90929. All right. And if you don't feel... Don't feel safe using your mental math. Uh, I can understand it's a if it's a test, you're likely to do some funny things in your head. So that's 0 0.40929. That's length two. So we've gone almost all the way around it. Uh, length three is going to be from I should write this down, 0 0.909. Huh. Yeah, 0 0.909. Length 3 is going to be from here to here. And this is the part of the, that requires calculus because we have a curved section. So we're going to have to use our concept of arc length. So L3... That's going to be the integral from a to b of root 1 plus y prime squared dx. Okay, that red curve has an equation of 2 sine x cosine x. So we'll need to take the derivative of that. This is a product. You can see it like that. So we're going to use the product rule y prime, the derivative of 2 sine is 2 cosine x. Plus, uh, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So y prime seems to be 2 cosine squared x minus 2 sine squared x. Now that sounds like there should be a Pythagorean, not a Pythagorean formula, but there should be some kind of trigonometric simplification here. Uh, you know, your trig teacher would be upset at you if you didn't use it, but I don't think I'm going to be too concerned about that. Uh, we're here to learn calculus and not trig. So we're going to put it in the calculator. So what does it really matter if we simplify that or not? It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so L3 is interval from 0 to 1. Great.
1 plus, uh, here's our y prime, 2 cosine squared x minus 2 sine squared x, square that guy, dx. That should give me, what did I do that for? That calculation right there should give me the length of that curve. All right, so let's do this in our calculator. Integrate. Zero to one. Square root. One plus quantity. Two cosine x. Oh, I have to square that cosine x. I forgot about that, so I'm going to put the cosine x in parentheses. There is no real neat way on your calculator to do cosine squared x. Okay, plus 2. Again, we're going to square sine. And then we're going to square the derivative. dx. So we have 2 cosine squared x plus 2 sine squared x. Let's see if I made any mistakes. And I didn't make a mistake. I did make a mistake. That is minus 2 sine x, 2 sine squared x. So I'm going to go back here and fix that. Change that to a minus sign. Push enter. And we've got 1.55542. So it is 1.55542. All right. So we've got all three of our lengths. All we need to do is find the perimeter. So the perimeter equals, let's figure out all of them. The first one was uh, root 1.25 plus that second one, L2, was 0 0.40929. And that third one is at arc length, which is 1.55542. Now that I have that, um, I'm actually not going to take a chance about um, typing those into my calculator all messed up. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and second square root of 1 squared plus... 0.5 squared. See how much I trust my own math at this point. Uh, we're going to add to it that quantity. And we're going to add to that this quantity. Put that all together. And 3.08276. The perimeter equals 3.08276. Let's see. Let's make sure we have correct linkage. Do we have all of the lengths? Where did all those numbers come from? Yes, we do. Do we link perimeter to the number with an equal sign? Yes, we did. Perimeter equals this guy expression, which equals this number. So perimeter is equal to that number. Do I need to do units? Let's see. Find the perimeter of the region R. No mention of unit, so I'm not obliged to put any in there. That's the end. Part C, the perimeter is 3.08276. And that concludes question 12. If that sounds like it could be a free response question, yeah, that does sound like it could be a free response question. There is a lot of parts to that. And uh, yeah, there it is. Good luck.